I'm going to work on that project. And I feel like, you know, if it gets too hot, I can always quit. I've got plenty mm -hmm. of lights inside the pole barn. Now, basically, I, I put a trailer up and then and then built a pole barn around, around the trailer, a 30 by 30 pole barn with a loft in it. <clears throat> that, that was in 20 and 14 before my health got bad. Yeah. But now, diabetes is rough. Diabetes is rough. You don't ever know from one day to another whether or not you're going to be uh, normal or whether or not you're going to have diarrhea or whether or not you can even go out in the public or not. There are some days that I don't, I don't even feel like that I can even go out into the public because I'm probably going to wind up having an accident. <clears throat> but the reason why that I wanted to come up here and talk to you, Mr. Billy, is because I've been sending your minister some material. I don't know if he's been getting it or not. I don't know if he put me on block or not. He well, didn't discuss it this afternoon towards me uh, sending him material that he's been receiving. Um, I can send it through Messenger through my phone. But one of the things that I wanted to bring to your attention that I guarantee you I would have insulted everybody sitting there, not just the preacher. Yeah. But if I would have told everybody pertaining to trying to become perfected, even as Jesus wanted to perfect us, why don't everybody put their cards on the table and whatever assets we got, let's sell everything that we have and pull it and give it to the poor and feed the, feed the hungry. Yeah. Now, how many of us sitting around that table today do you think would have been willing to have done that, including yourself? Uh, I don't know. Well, Jesus Jesus went to the uh, the rich young ruler, come to Jesus and told Jesus, man, I've done this, this, this. I've, I've, I've lived a, a good certain life. And Jesus looked at him and said, one thing thou lackest. And he said, what is that? He said, you've got too many assets. You're, wor you're worshiping your assets. He said, go sell everything you got, give it to the poor, feed the hungry, and follow after me. Now, are we dedicated, and right now I'm talking to myself, are we dedicated enough in the blood of Christ whenever it comes to trying to perfect ourselves in the way that Jesus wanted us to be? Because you know good and well if he wanted that rich young ruler to be that way, he wants us to be that way too towards being sold out to him. Are we willing to do that, Mr. Billy? Probably 99.9% .9 of us is not. He wants a... You know why? You know why? He wants a cheerful giver. He does want a cheerful giver, but the thing about it is we're hanging on to our assets thinking, well, we'll benefit our, our children. We'll benefit our, our, our daughter or, or our son or... Or we'll will it over here to this one, or will it over there to that one. We know we're not going to be able to take it with or us. Be like the rich uncle was, going to give it to the church and buy his front seat in heaven. Like, uh, <clears throat> well, you may think that you uh, you can buy a front seat in heaven, but I got news for you: you can't buy, Martha, you can't purchase salvation. What it, Martha said, I want my two boys with thunders. Yeah. One to sit the right hand, one to the left hand. Yeah. Yeah. What do you tell them? Can they pay the price? Well, Mr. Billy, I ain't told you this, but I'm going to go ahead and open up to you, and I am recording this right now. Um, the first time that you and me met, okay, I had a trailer setting up here on Pebble Island. A little trailer. I've got four of them sitting on my property. Um, I was living up there, and God was moving on me towards me predicting that there was going to be a mighty great earthquake that was going to be devastating to not only Memphis, Tennessee, but also all the way up towards St. Louis. And God led me all the way up into Christmas, which is give or take about a week before the new year had ended. And there was lots of things going on with Yellowstone and lots of other earthquakes and stuff that was going on all over the world and volcanoes erupting 
And I knew that it was going to come to that if I allowed it because I had done already predicted it. Yeah. But I put a, I put a stop to it. I said, you know what? That's not the answer because all that's going to do is create more problems than it's going to solve because it's going to tear up our infrastructure. It's going to destroy the roads. It's going to destroy bridges. It's going to cause uh, buildings to fall on people. And it's going to be chaotic in the Northwest Tennessee area from Memphis, Tennessee, all the way up to St. Louis, give or take for probably at least six months to a year before things halfway even begin to straighten out. Yeah. So what did I pray whenever I decided to stop the prediction of a mighty, of a mighty major earthquake? I prayed this, God, this is in your hands. And no matter what happens, this is going to be ordained by you for you to do your will. And I left it at that. And of course, 20 and 19 come, because I was up here during 2018. That's whenever me and you first met. 20 and 19 come. They had all that commotion with Donald Trump over the impeachment deal towards what he'd done with the Ukrainians leading up into 2020. And that's whenever what hit? The pandemic. Now, I don't know if y'all are sold out on the fact that it's real, but I am. Whenever you see case after case after case on TV of not just people dying here in the United States by the groves, but whenever you see it over in India and South America and other places, uh, Germany, England, France, I mean, the disease is real pertaining to it being a microscopic germ in a biological uh, type way, but I believe also that it's not just biological, but it's also spiritual, because why? Because it says in the Bible, in the last days, Christ would come forth to sever the wicked from among the just. Sever the wicked from among the just. How do you think he's going to sever the wicked from among the just? He's going to cause people to get bad in their health. He's going to cause heart attacks and aneurysms. He's going to cause people to, to, to lose out on their lives towards drug overdoses. He's going to cause all kinds of havoc in these last days because these are the days pertaining to the great sorrows that are to befallen upon the humanity because of all the sin. We're living in the days of sorrows right now. We're living in the first three chapters of Revelations where he talks about that he will take the people that think that they have need of nothing and he's going to show them their shame. He's going to show them their nakedness. And he says to repent, repent, or else I will throw thee off into a sickbed. What do you think this pandemic's been? It's been a sickbed. Mm -hmm. that God has allowed to fall upon to humanity. And he's done this to try to cull the herd, to try to get people from sinning so much in this area so that they'll straighten up. It's, it's the way that Mother Nature works. Uh, it's it's kind of like one year. <clears throat> Did you notice when it come that real bad cold front? I mean, when cold spell back in December or January or whenever it was? When we got down around zero, did you notice how many birds fell out of the sky and died? No. I did. I seen dozens of them. Didn't see none of them, I reckon. <laughs> I seen dozens of them because I was looking for them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They was either on roads or out in the yard or out in the fields. Some of them was on top of buildings. They just couldn't they couldn't withstand that type of that type of cold. Also, you know, one year we liable to be inundated by a bunch of wild rabbits to the point that you can't even get out here and drive at night without almost running over two or three of them. And all of a sudden it'll come a, a large, a hard winter and it'll kill out about half of them. Mother Nature has a way of taking care of herself, of getting things back in balance. Yeah. What the problem is, we're not reading it properly to the point of understanding 
why God is allowing for stuff like this to occur. And he's basically culling the herd. You know what I'm saying? He's culling the herd. He's separating the boys from the men or the women from the girls is what he's doing here because he said that in the last days he would sever the wicked from among the just. I realize that it's supernatural, and I also realize it sounds cruel. But the fact of the matter is, until we get the mind of Christ of understanding how he understood things to weep whenever they come into the world and rejoice whenever they leave the world, providing that they've had a relationship with the Heavenly Father, until we get that same mindset, Billy, we're not going to be able to comprehend things on a spiritual level the same way that Jesus did. Now, today, I think I may have roughed up your minister's feathers a little bit by bringing some facts out of that Christ come not for those that was sick, I mean, those that wasn't sick, but he, those that needed not a physician, but he come for those that did need a physician. I'm quoting scripture right there. Yeah. <clears throat> you, you made reference or asked the question as I was sitting at the table. Well, who needs who needs a physician? And I spoke up and said, all of us. Yeah. And we do to some extent. Some of us need a physician a little more than others pertaining to getting back on the straight and narrow. But if it wasn't for the Lord Jesus Christ, I wouldn't be sitting here right now talking to you. I would be out in somebody's cemetery popping up daisies because I know for a fact that God has spared my life not once, not twice, but several times. Several times. Now it's up to me to go through that search procedure of trying to figure out, okay, God, you spared my life. Now what did you spare my life for? Do you want me to be a singer? Do you want me to be a spiritual advisor? Do you want me to be a, a, a preacher? Do you want me to be an evangelist? Do you want me to do this? Do you want me to do that? These are all questions that we need to be asking ourselves, not just me, but we need to be asking each other those questions, especially after you've known that God had his precious hand upon you because you didn't, you didn't perish. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't want to offend nobody in the meeting today, but the fact of the matter is <clears throat> God's great, glorious righteousness goes from the far as the east is from the west and whenever it comes to lining up with the things of the Father, they even tried to snare Jesus and would walk up to Jesus and say, thy good master, thy good master. And he would reply, there is not but one but good and that is the Father. <clears throat> in other words, he recognized that he wasn't above his master. Who was his master? The creator, the father. Now, who is our master? Jesus, that maketh intercession prayer for us. For a servant is not greater than his master. Once more, if, there, if, if we was sinless and we could have all evolved in this perfected state, that the heavenly father wanted us to, to have been in, what purpose would it have been that Jesus ever come and died and demonstrated the demonstrations that he demonstrated for us? That's just it. We all need Christ. Mm -hmm. Some a little more than others. Some, some has dibble dabbled because it talks about the depths of Satan in the first three chapters of Revelations. It says, he who have not known the depths of Satan, hold fast till I come. I've never killed nobody, but I guarantee you there's probably over a million people in America that has, that's either doing time or has done time for killing somebody. I've never done crystal meth. I've never done heroin. I've never done some of those deeply profounded hallucinate drugs that a lot of these kids out here has done, and it's messed them up. There are certain levels of sin to where, as my mother would say, well, I never thought that he would stoop that low. Yeah. Some of us does have a, an invisible moral line that, that tells ourselves, no matter what happens in my life, I will not cross that line. 
I will not become a murderer. I will not become a junkie. I will not get hooked on heroin. I will not do this. Some of us draws that line. Some of us don't know where that line is, depending upon how weak we are. And of course, some of us are, are stronger than others. But I'm just, I'm just going to be quite frank with you. One of my weaknesses is looking at women and thinking that they're one of the most beautiful designed creatures that God has ever created. You know, but you know, you got to look at the facts. What business would I have going down here to the red light district, preaching and going in there with a bunch of prostitutes, knowing what they're doing every weekend towards trying to supposedly <coughs> save one of them and get them out of that type of atmosphere. I don't have no business doing that because I'm, I'm purposely putting a stumbling block in front of myself that I know that I'm, I'm, I'm already weakened in to begin with. You know what I'm saying? Now, if you handed me a million dollars, and I know this is going to sound probably crazy, but if you handed me a million dollars in a suitcase and said, Dennis, I need for you to hang on to this until in the morning, and I'll pick it up, I'm just about 99.9% .9 sure come in the morning you would have your suitcase a million dollars. Yeah. <clears throat> so there's different temptations that are more appealing to people than others regardless whether it's one thing or another you know I've never been I, I guess at one time I was uh, I experimented with a little bit of marijuana I experimented with a little bit of beer but as far as getting on cocaine or getting on some of these other hardcore drugs that wasn't me Billy and, and God spared me from that type of of lifestyle, and I guess if I was living today being one of the millennials, one of the kids growing up with all the peer pressure, I don't know that I would be fortunate enough to be able to stay away from all, all them peer pressure temptations that's out there that kids nowadays ha has to deal with. They got to deal with stuff that temptations uh, like, like you and I didn't even imagine that existed back whenever we was kids growing up. Yeah, and I ain't been taught neither. And they hadn't been taught neither. No. Because there's probably about a third of them out there that either don't have a father or don't know who their father is, and some of them don't even have a the, their original mother. They were just orphans. You know what I'm saying? One teacher now is the internet dumping. That's right. Schools is not even teaching anymore. I know. But I know that you st you sat in there for a while talking to him because I sat up there on that bench for about 20 minutes hoping you'd come on out. That way I wouldn't have to come down here at your house. Oh. But y'all must have got involved in a deeper conversation after I left. God, we was talking about going up Gunner about where we're going to stay and I want to. They got a trip for planning to go to the Ark. Okay, up in Kentucky? Kentucky. Yeah. And, uh, Eastern Kentucky. We were talking about that, and they want to meet someplace on the road to eat. But like I told them, I don't see how they can because some are going to drive faster than others. Some are going to stop because of the kids. Right. But they want to try to meet at one spot with about 4 o'clock, but, you know. Rendezvous somewhere. Would you like us driving to Nashville? You might drive 45, I might drive 75. That's right. You know. But y'all going up there as a group then to go look at that ark? Yeah. I was told that it's breathtaking. The time and effort that he put in all that. It's supposed to be what, four football fields long? It's supposed to be on the original dimension that the Bible says. Uh-huh. <clears throat> see once more you know getting back to, to a man of righteousness God chose Noah because in God's eyes Noah was a righteous man but now if we was living in that same period and we personally knew Noah we may have thought that Noah was no better than anybody else but apparently Noah must have been doing something right with God for God to have chose him and his family to be selected for a certain particular task, the same way with, with Mary. 
<laughs> if you was if you was if you knew Mary personally growing up in that era, you may not have thought that, you know, what's so special about Mary? Mary does the same thing as everybody else. She goes here, she goes there, she eats, she drinks, she does this, she does that. But now in God's eye, he seen Mary as her being a righteous lady. And that's the reason why he chose her or selected her of manifesting the Christ child in a supernatural form. Because whenever you get to looking at who Jesus actually was, Jesus did not have the same chromosomes as we got, and they have proven this. We've got a certain amount of chromosomes in our blood pertaining to male and female because whenever we was formed, we was formed with male and female. Jesus didn't have that. He didn't have the same chromosomes as we got. In other words, she was seduced supernaturally because she was a virgin. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, she was pregnant. So really and truly, Jesus was half man and half divine. Or, you can look at it in another way, Jesus was 100% man and 100% divine. Because I see Jesus compartmentalizing him as him holding two different positions. He held the position of being God's only begotten as far as the Messiah, the only begotten Son of God. But I also see him metaphorically towards actually being God in the flesh. You see what I'm saying? Whenever you get to looking at the, at the, at the pyramid, what do they call it, uh, Billy? The, the pyramid, the, the uh, triangular, uh, what do they call that? Mm -hmm. Where you got the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit? Yeah. The Trinity. The Trinity. The Son represented the Father. Once more, a servant is not greater than his master. So looking at it from that angle, Christ was God's Son. Right? Yeah. All right, then you go over, and he said he would not leave us comfortless, so he sent the Holy Ghost. Why did he send the Holy Ghost? So that we could overpower these things. So that we could learn towards becoming more righteous. So that we could grow and become more uh, in tune with God. We could, you know, um, mature. But I also see where Christ was also not just a representation of God, but he was actually God in the flesh, metaphorically speaking, because he was holding that same position because a lot of times whenever he was talking to his disciples, he would say, well, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Yeah. So you got to be able to separate and it says in the Bible to rightly be able to divide the scriptures to study the show thyself approved. You've got to be able to know that sometimes metaphorically he was talking about one thing, but then also he may have been talking about something on the same on the same conversation or the same uh, the same angle. Kind of like the sword. The word of God's supposed to be the two edged sword, right? Yeah. The word of God is a two-edged sword. It cutteth the man, the fleshly man, also the spiritual man. Well, let me ask you a question. <coughs> Was that a metaphor sword that cut that centurion Roman soldier's ear off whenever they come up to Jesus and was going to capture him? Well, I don't know. I don't know. Well, no, it wasn't a, a symbolic sword. It was a real sword. It was a real tangible sword. Now, whenever Christ talked about the rich young ruler, this is what the minister talked about today, and then I'm going to let you go. 
the minister today said that by and large, most people know that particular story as it being the rich young ruler simply because he had lots of assets. He had lots of money. But there's a difference in wealthy and being rich. And there's also a difference in being richly discerned in the spirit and having carnal riches. So you can you can you can be wealthy in health. If you got good health, you you've got good wealth. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're wealthy in health. But I just wanted to come over here and make sure that I haven't offended uh, that minister. What did you say his name was? Ron. Yeah, Brother Ron. And I was just wondering if he said anything to you about some of the material that I've been sending to him. No, he, he ain't said nothing, so I don't know. Uh, I have no idea. I just wonder why he didn't correspond back with me today in telling me yay or nay, or of course I never asked him. Maybe he, maybe he's not getting the material. I don't know. Uh, he ain't said nothing, so I don't know. Uh, but do you understand what I'm saying? That I would have offended everybody around that table today if I would have looked at them and I said, "Okay, everybody here says that they don't have a sin. Everybody here claims that they have reached their perfected state." So if that be the case, I want everybody to gather up all your goods, all your property, get all the money out of your bank, and let's pull it together right here in the center of this table, and then let's live on the land or do whatever and go send all our money out to the poor. How many of us do you think would have done it? Well, I don't know. <clears throat> Probably none. Be honest, Billy. Without Probably it. none. I'm talking about selling everything you got yeah. all the way down to your toilet paper holder. Yeah. But it, it's not... Uh, uh, that's what that's what Christ asked the rich young ruler to do. <clears throat> yeah. Sell all that I have and follow after me. And he walked away sorrowful because he knew the point that Christ was making that, see, let me just say this. There's two commandments that hang all the other commandments in the Bible. And there's more commandments in the Bible other than just 10 commandments. The 10 commandments is just the fundamental uh, part of God. But the greatest commandment of all is to love thy God with all thy heart, mind, body, and soul, correct? Yeah. And the second is likened unto it, which is what? Love thy neighbor as thyself, right? For if you hold these two commandments, you're automatically going to hold all the rest of the, of the eight or whatever many is that God has asked you to hold. The thing about it is, when if you look at the word all and look at the word partial all, you got a division between zero and a hundred. Most people will stack it up to about maybe 20%. Oh, I love God 20%. Or I love God 30%. Or I love God even 50%. But whenever you're talking about an individual that's willing to sacrifice everything, including their very own life, the very air that's in their lungs, that I'm willing to sacrifice all just to be able to follow after Christ, you'll find very few that love thy God with all thy heart, mind, body, and soul. Yeah. <laughs> now, they may be convinced in their little finite mind, well, I'm doing the best that I can, and, 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 and I'm, I'm, I'm giving here, and I'm doing this. I'm you know, going to church, and I'm being a part of this and part of that, and there's no doubt they probably are. Well, I don't think nobody does the best they can. <clears throat> So whenever you get to looking at the, at the uh, gloriness of God that spreads as far from the east from the west, will we ever line up, Billy? That's like saying, 
you won't no longer need Jesus as your Savior to make recompense or intercession prayer for you. For if you sin, you have an advocate with the Father. I pray every day, every day, Father, please forgive me. Because I know there's going to be thoughts that I shouldn't have thought. There's going to be concerns that I should have been more concerned about. There's going to be areas that I'm going to be lacking in. And, and, and it's going to be, it's going to be so innocent that I'm not even going to be able to know myself that I'm guilty of these things, but I know that I'm guilty. Just like loving thy neighbor or loving thy God with all thy heart, mind, body, and soul. I'm not going to, I may not never line up to that. I hope that I will. I'm striving towards that. Yeah. I'm striving towards it just like everybody else. But if you was to put the cards on the table and tell me, okay, Dennis, I'll do it if you'll do it. Take all your assets, get all the money out of your bank, take everything you got, including the shirt on your back, and sell it. And we'll meet here next Friday, and we'll pull our money together and put it right here in the center of the table, and we'll give it to the poor and feed, feed the hungry. I don't know that I'd be able to do that, Billy. Well, depending on what God tells you, not right? I guess, you know. Well, how's God's going to tell me? Is he going to come down here and evoke the lightning? <clears throat> he going to audibly say, Dennis, go sell your assets. He has before. You know, that's the way the prophets and old that do cheer from him. Well, whenever I hear the voice of God, I hear it internally in my inner being pertaining to my conscience. And whenever God gets to wearing on my conscience, then I know that I either done something that I wasn't supposed to have done or vice versa. You know what I'm saying? I should have been more giving or more forgiving and that's the reason why that my conscience is bothering me. That's the way God speaks to me. Now, he may speak to you differently, yeah. you know. That's the way he speaks to me. But I do want to say good luck in your trip. And I've heard 99.9% .9 of the people that walk in there and experience that experience where that ark is gets a mighty good blessing. Hmm. Most of them tear up. It's almost like a, a, an anointing of, of, a, of like a baptism, the way that I've been told. Because once you look at something that big, you can now picture how small that you are and how great of an assignment that Noah actually took on during the time that he took on something like that. And I don't know, according to the Bible, what, it took him like 100 years to build a boat, didn't it? Yeah. I don't know if their time scale was on the same time scale as ours, but anybody that's going to build something like that from scratch, we're not talking about chainsaws, we're not talking about electricity mm -hmm. uh, uh, appliances, we're talking about everything the old-fashioned way with a saw back and forth and hammering with pegs. And, and you know, I mean, it took... It took a lot of momentum to drive somebody to do that for that length of time. Do you not agree? I'd say you had a lot of help to start that with. Evangelical supernatural beings was helping him, huh? Well, no, I say the people did. And after so long, they just got weary and fell off. Just like uh, a restaurant. New restaurant comes in town. Everybody wants to go to it. Yeah. And after the new wears off, thrill riders off, they go back home. Yeah. Possibility. You know what? Uh, and uh, you said he worked on the boat during the day and preached during the night. You know what I mean? For 120 years. Telling them that doom and gloom was coming to him, huh? And doom and gloom come to him too, didn't it? See, the message that I'm telling people today is that the opening of the seals have already begun 
And it's just a matter of time before the false prophet and the Antichrist comes onto the scene pertaining to the new world order and the mark of the beast. Yeah. Well, when I was just a child growing up as a youngster, that's what was fed to me from various churches, from various preachers. They was talking about the end time and 666 and the mark of the beast and the two witnesses and, and all this other stuff. And now all of a sudden you have an individual that really believes in what he believes in pertaining to all this stuff. And now the church world has abandoned me and forsaken me. The so-called church world. Yeah. You got two different churches on the planet. You got a so-called church and then you got a true authentic church. The true authentic church, the people basically would be willing to sacrifice their lives today, tonight, immediately. Because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And they're tired of this anguish. They're tired of this horror. They're tired of the torment that they're going through down here upon to the planet. Now granted, the people that take the initiative towards taking their own lives I think that they've done wrong by doing that. I don't think that we're supposed to quicken our death. But I can understand their morale towards wanting to leave this planet because so much has been thrown up into their lap. So much pain, so much agony. But you got the true church and then you got the so-called church. Well, the so-called church is the very ones that has left me out to dry. Do you know what that means to be left out to dry? No, uh, I don't understand that. What do you mean the so-called church? The so-called church. The church people that, that want to be churchy-churchy, that, that want to recognize God with their lips, but in their heart is far from them because they never wanted to support the windmill ministries going all the way back 30-something years ago, even though my message has always been a message of utopia and peace. So these people that talk about peace, Billy, they really don't want peace. Because if you get to looking at the, at the, at the councils and the judges and the probation officers and, and all the jail system, if there was peace, there would be no need for us to have judges. There would be no need for us to have all these different courtrooms. And all, you, you know what I'm saying? They'll tell you they want peace. But deep down inside, they really don't want peace because that would be a jeopardy to their own to their own occupation. See? I feel like somebody that has went on a blind date and been stood up. I feel like that the church communities, especially the so-called church communities, have basically set me up. They have... Uh, they have wanted to put me out in the front row towards representing something and doing something, but yet, no, they don't want to get in behind the ministry to actually support the ministry so that the ministry will become effective. Yeah. Everything that I've done in the past 30 years has basically been all on my own, going from coast to coast three different times, spreading the word about Jesus and also spreading the word about the doomsday antichrist and the mark of the beast and the new world order. Does that make me, does that make me a freak? Because God has, has given me a message to give to the, to the people? No, what it makes me, Billy, is a messenger. They didn't like the message so they turned on the messenger. Okay. Yes, that's all I am, is a messenger. They have attacked the messenger because they didn't like the message. That's what's happened in my life for the past 30 plus years. And basically, I'm going to do it the same way that I've done those earthquakes, and I'm going to do it the same way that I've done everything else. I'm just going to lay it at the foot of the cross and say, you know what, God? This is what's happened in my life. This is where I am. I'm trying to be as honest with you and with
people like Billy as I possibly can because I'm a true believer that no man can pluck you from the Father's hand. Now the devil will try. He'll, he'll send people to make you mad. He'll send temptations. You'll go through trials. Okay? But the Bible says, he who shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. That's where people like me and you have to endure to the very end. The end of what? The end of our very last dying breath. Yeah. Towards holding on to the faith of God through the blood of Christ that with him and because of him, he's going to save us from perishing. That way one day we'll hear him say, well done, well done, thy good and faithful servant. It ain't going to be done through Allah. It ain't going to be done through Muhammad. It ain't going to be done through Buddha. It ain't going to be done through the Wiccans. It ain't going to be done through any other organization or name other than through the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I do hope that your kidney stones will get better. Have they given you strong, some strong medication to break them all up? No, they went in and busted them up. Oh, they went in and busted them up. Yeah, put some stents in them, so. Well, you're, all, still well, you're already relieving then, ain't you? No, not this time. I did before. I had it done twice, but this time worse. See, I'm very, very fortunate. At the age of two weeks, I had a kidney, a left kidney removed. And um, God has blessed me tremendously towards not having to go through kidney stones a whole lot. As far as I know, I've only had to go through it once. And uh, whenever I get to feeling like the least little bit, like I've got an infection in my back, like I pulled a muscle back there, first thing I do is grab up a uh, thing of that uh, cranberry juice. Cranberry juice. I'll go to drinking that cranberry juice. I may drink a whole gallon of it in less than two hours. Yeah. But I put it in my system because I don't want to go through that hurting again. No. <laughs> that hurts. And I was told the cranberry juice is the best thing for mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah. And lots of water. Yeah. Of course, sometimes water don't get it. No. And I'm sure they probably got something out there better than cranberry juice. I just don't know what it is, and you probably have to go to the doctor and get a. They say uh, vinegar and uh, citric acid. Citric acid. Yeah, yeah. oranges. Oranges. I'm going to try that. Something like that. Absolutely. <clears throat> they said both my kidneys are full. Oh, Lord. And my gallbladder's full. Oh, Lord. <laughs> well, are you going, or can you sleep at night, or are you just in so uh, much pain? Okay, last night I didn't sleep good. I did something good. And then this morning, I went to church. Did you? That, oh, this night 11 o'clock started getting nauseated. I got you. And then at night, and then I started hurting. They say that uh, beer, that's probably been on kidneys. Looks about better. Yeah, I've heard that too, and beer. And the alcohol will, will kill the infection out. I've heard that too. I said that down at church and I like that a bit. Oh, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, if you take a lot of medications, you got to watch alcohol. Yeah, because that can come back and and, and uh, backfire on you. But you eat the same thing when <coughs> you eat pickles. <coughs> any fruit or anything that has been pickled, you're getting acid <coughs> vinegar. See, that's whenever the community turned against me 30 years ago in the mid mid 80s you know where vinegar <coughs> comes from don't you <coughs> vinegar comes from uh pickles well <coughs> vinegar comes from anything that will ferment but it comes from primarily from pickles don't it well hey, that's the preservative <coughs> that you put in pickles vinegar you mean you, know, you look at a vinegar bottle <coughs> apple cider vinegar comes from uh, uh <coughs> fermented Apple. <coughs> okay. And you let it go further and further and further. It goes past the alcohol state drinking. Then it starts going to the acidity of the vinegar. Well, I know raisins come from grapes. Right. <coughs> A lot of people don't know that. Yeah. But the acid in, in the in the, the 
the fruit. <coughs> Once that fruit goes through the fermentation, it starts putting out <coughs> acid or vinegar. So where does the beer come from? The hops in the beer? Yeah. Is that they, what breaks the... They brew it. It, it comes from rice and uh, hops. The and, hops and the, and the rice and stuff yeah. in it? Just like corn. See, corn liquor comes from corn. Well, it's got to go through the fermentation. You're talking about white lime? Yeah, anything. Um, uh, you look at white distilled vinegar? Yeah. It's got all kinds of vegetables on it. That's when right. When the vegetables start rotting down and going through the fermentation, they start putting off alcohol. Well, are you a diabetic, Bill? No, I don't guess. I bet you, if you was to get checked, they'd probably tell you you was probably oh. running high. Probably. On your blood level to the point that they put you on some sort of diabetic medication. Well, they need it or not. No, they'd probably, the they'd probably, the, you probably wouldn't line up with the model of man to the point that they'd say you needed it. Yeah. I don't know. I've checked my sugar here for Rosen for about 102 and 104. What, by sticking yourself? Yeah. <clears throat> Maybe God will bless you well, in that area to the point that you don't have to have that. That's just like blood pressure. Uh, they say a heavy set fella will have high blood pressure. Well, mine stays uh, on the low side, 65 to 70. On the high side, 155, 160. 120. To 130. Huh. That they can't get over it. That is good. What do you again? I what? eat a lot of I eat a lot of peppers, a lot of onions, you know what I mean? A lot of garlic. Do you? Did you ever get uh, the coronavirus shot? No. How about you? Did you get it? You're not gonna get it? No. Even if it's available, you're not going to get it. No. <laughs> so you you're not convinced that it's real. What? The coronavirus. After watching all them people down TV, you're still not convinced it's real. Of what? The virus. Well, the virus. I, I say it's probably real. But you're just going to depend upon God to protect you and keep you from catching it. I don't see a need for me taking it. So I don't know. <clears throat> I've seen people take it and get it. I've seen people that take the shots and still get it. Uh, I could have had it and don't know it. You thought it was just a common cold or something? Flu or something? One people, you go in the hospital, some of you lose your taste. One of you, you taste bud. One you can't smell. One you run a high fever. One you don't want to have it. So, what are you going to believe? It affects people differently. It sure it does. And I, in your body. and I still think that it's as much supernatural as it is natural pertaining to it being biological. I don't know about that now. I don't know. <clears throat> well, there, there, I mean, there's, there's got to be something going on because it's not doing the same in India right now as it is in China. Right now, people in India are, are dropping like flies. Just like right now, the hot spot right now is up in Michigan. Yeah. Up oh. up up north of us, or Wisconsin, maybe Wisconsin. No, I think it is Michigan. But they're gonna get it when you're gonna have to take it. <sighs> when you can't fly, you can't go out of the country, you can't get on the plane. You if you don't have proof plane. that you've taken it, yeah. Do you think that, that that could be the beginning phases of the mark of the beast? Or you cannot buy nor sell unless you got the mark? No. That's just some idea to, to push them drugs. Maybe so. I, my mother couldn't eat shrimp, couldn't eat no shellfish, because I, I, I died in her system. She was it allergic all to it. Back down to your system and chemistry in your body. She was allergic to it. Yeah. See, I go beyond that. 
I go into the spiritual realm of it. That Christ said to clean the inside of the cup and the, and the outside would clean itself. In other words, it's up to the Holy Spirit of rather not you're going to drink something poisonous and you're going to die from it or you're going to drink something poisonous and it ain't going to hurt you. For Christ himself said, if you drink of anything deadly, it shall not harm you. That's the reason why those people up in East Tennessee still to this day, or they used to, I don't know if they still do, play with those rattlesnakes and take a chance on being, being, being bitten by a daggum snake. Some of them live, some of them die. Yeah. Well, see, again, you got people out in the world that gets bit by them. Some live, some die. That's right. And it's up to God towards who's going to be who's going to be taken out that way. Yeah. Then again, you lot be taken out from an aneurysm or a stroke or a heart attack or a drive-by shooting or, or or some other. You may fall out of the front porch and break your neck. Airplane, car accident. Right. Any of the above. Do you think I may have agitated that minister today, Brother Ron? I don't think so. He didn't. He didn't act like nothing about it. So I don't know. No. He didn't say nothing. Well, he said he didn't want it brought back up no more to the in the on the table meeting. Uh. Because I guess he must have thought that I said that that uh, we're all going to sin unintentionally and ignorantly, regardless whether we want to or not. And I guess in one about way, I did say that. But it also says it in the scriptures, for if a man saith that he have not sinned, that the truth not be in him. Mm -hmm. And if we try to convince ourselves that we are holier than thou, or we're above and beyond sin, I think we're fooling ourselves. Was well, that before or after you accepted that we had sin? I think the sin diminishes once you come to the Lord and you give your heart and your life and as you mature with the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit will, will teach you towards what's acceptable and what isn't acceptable. He'll chastise you. He'll give you a, he'll give you a, a, a low down uh, spanking. And I'm pretty sure you've had God get all over you before because of something that you've done or something that you should have done that you didn't do. Mm -hmm. But that's all part of maturing in, in the Lord. Some people mature quicker than others. Some people don't never mature. Some people, it was nothing but a game to them whenever they went down there to the altar to begin with. You know what I'm saying? They wasn't sincere. And that's what, that's what defies all of it right there. Your sincerity. If you're sincere enough that you're willing to lay down your life, as a man told me one time, Dennis, Whenever you get to the point that you want God worse than you want the very air that comes into your lungs, then you're starting to get serious with God. But how many of us get that serious? That you're willing to die just so that you can be with your heavenly father. Very few of us, you know it. Once more, it's based around that all factor. Love thy God with all thy heart. Not part of all, not 30% of all, not 10% of all, but all, 100%. Amen.